Hello and welcome to another Reddit Twilight Struggle League Stalin Division match. Uh, my name is Jesse Marshall. Excited to get going here with a pretty strong hand. Uh, so we've got Socialist Governments, D Style, D Coal, Suez Crisis, Blockade, and a 4 up. Uh, admittedly, it's US Japan Pact, but you know, we'll take a 4 up. Um, we've got No Rad, we've got Truman Doctrine, which we can hopefully get out of the way on turn one. So, all in all, pretty powerful. Um, so we can open with socialist governments here at pretty low risk. Uh, we could headline decal, but uh, it's high uh, upside, uh, high risk, high reward, uh, because we can move to instantly dominate Asia and we can press in Asia pretty effectively. But I think we can also do that from an action round since we've got an AR1 coup and we can follow up with another coup. Um, so, because yeah, I'm pretty happy to um, Coup with Truman Doctrine on Panama, for example, just to degrade DEFCON if it comes to that. So, how do we want to handle this? I think we'll start off with the socialist governments just in case it gives us a an in in Europe. It doesn't, which is fine. So we'll just attempt the coup on Iran and see how we go. Get rolling. Well, that's a good start. Okay. So from there, one of the interesting things about this hand is that it is a little more limited in terms of the um, ops that we can use to spread from Iran. Not that we don't have any, but we just have fewer. Uh, so they've spread into Lebanon. I think we're happy to coup Lebanon here. We can also decol, but I don't really like giving them the coups and it makes it harder for us to go into Africa when we decol at high DEFCON. Although decoling at DEFCON 4 is okay. Um, if we go into Lao, but we do give them the coup on Thailand. So I think I'd rather hold fire on that. The thing is, cooing Lebanon is not super high impact, although it does demand a little bit of a response from them uh, into the Middle East if we are successful. So, well, two sixes to start off, that's not too bad as a Soviet player, because we're signaling uh, Middle East scoring in hand by doing this, and that's a lot of VPs for them to give up straight off the bat. So. They, they do have to be a little bit careful here. Um, obviously, Truman Doctrining uh, prior to d -Stel is not ideal because we did just you know lose a net influence that we could have put somewhere else, but we still get to... Well, we, we win the war and we get extra influence in Lebanon, so all is not lost with that play. Um, we now get to degrade DEFCON using this Suez Crisis, which is nice. So we can coup Egypt... Um, to get DEFCON down and then decol, uh, de uh, although that means that they get to go to Thailand first. So it's not ideal, but if we leave DEFCON at three, um, then that forces them to degrade DEFCON so we can't coup Thailand at the start of next turn, which does free up a bit of space for us. So we could decol and demand the coup from them and put a bit of pressure on the ops in their hand. Um, if we decol into adjacent countries, it doesn't really achieve any more than cooing Egypt. So I think one of the things about cooing with Suez Crisis though, is it is really our last sort of ops that we want to play in our hand uh, to build on our decol or de-style this turn. So we do need to think a little bit about that. But cooing Egypt, yeah, it does, it degrades DEFCON, it, pl it places some pressure on them. Although perhaps we're happier to, yeah, perhaps decalling now is actually better because it leaves DEFCON higher than if they move into Thailand, we get to coup Thailand. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. So we can go like one, two, three, four. And I think, I mean, maybe we don't need to go into Lao as well, especially since we have D style. Maybe we get to go into Nigeria there because they can't really coup Nigeria this turn. Although giving them Nigeria is just not great. Like I think I would, think I would rather give them Lao, although we just really don't want to give them access to this region at all. So maybe we go Vietnam instead. So we definitely go Algeria because they're threatening France. 
We definitely want South Africa so that we can threaten the Southern African countries. It's just a matter of how we threaten Thailand most effectively here. So part of the issue with going to Laos is if they coup, then they get sort of access to India and Pakistan. But if they if we just go Malaysia and they coup us out of Malaysia, then we're out of the whole region and we need to put desal influence in there, which is okay, but I'd rather not. So perhaps going to Vietnam accomplishes the same thing as going into Malaysia, but it's one step further for them to spread. So I think that is better. Even though we've got Vietnam revolts in the deck, obviously. Um, I think keeping them further away from India and Pakistan is where we want to be. And this is part of that advantage of keeping Suez Crisis in hand here. It means that we can threaten France, for example, um, as well as being able to threaten Thailand from adjacency. And threaten the counter coup, because, I mean, in some ways, cooing with the China card is not so bad when we've got D-style, because um, one of the reasons that we might want to um, hold onto the China card is to try and force D-style out of the deck. Um, okay. So they're fighting for France here, which is really interesting. So we don't want to play into Thailand because we don't want to give them an easy coup. Um, with Truman out of the deck, I think I'm happy to just place the Suez Crisis influence into France here. Yes, it's bad realigns if, Def if DEFCON gets up to five, but I don't think the DEFCON is going to get up to five. Uh, we're demanding a four up response from them which they probably would have played anyway if they had it. And they've invented both Arab-Israeli war and de Gaulle. I mean, that just may be them getting uh, our events out of the deck, but it does appear to me as though their hand might be a little bit squeezed in terms of quality. So fighting pretty hard for France here, duck and cover. Um, now could be a good time to blockade, but they still have three cards left in hand. Um, <clears throat> they do have to coup this turn or they're giving us four VPs from Milops. Um, and the only really effective coup they've got is Algeria. I kind of want to space this NORAD to get that first space spot, but we've got some pretty good tempo here that I'd rather not give up as well. But we do need to get this no out of our hand and we are just probably gonna headline D-style next turn. So I guess it's about whether we blockade now. I think we do blockade now. Like there's a chance it goes off. If it doesn't, then we're getting a good card out of their hand anyway. Um, and then we can just probably no rat AR6, but we're just retaining our flexibility by doing that. Uh, and if they go take France and then space, which would kind of be the one um, downside of sequencing things this way, then um, that's okay, because it means we get the VPs. All right. Um, so blockade goes off, and then we get to space no red here. Right, fails annoying. Um, but they have to now coup Algeria. Or Malaysia or Vietnam, I suppose. Yeah, pro coup Vietnam is probably the play for them here. I mean, it depends on ops. It's probably better from a board position perspective, but it might be worse from a VP's perspective because it doesn't degrade DEFCON. Um, okay. So they're giving us Vietnam revolts and then maybe killing Vietnam? No, then killing Algeria. Okay. Rolling poorly and giving us some DEFCON VPs. All right, so now we've got um, Middle East scoring and we can be a little bit more aggressive with that. Korean War, one that we're probably gonna use for ops. Cambridge five, not ideal. So we haven't got a four up, which means it's gonna be harder for us to fight for West Germany here. Uh, and we're probably just gonna coup into the Middle East, but we might want to de-style two into Thailand and then coup Egypt. Um, let's have a think. D-style to Thailand to South America, I think is probably the way to go here. Even though we've got CNS, I think I'm getting Thailand is probably more important. 
uh, and that has played out very well for us. All right. So this is useless. One of those is not ideal. I'm just thinking about whether we want to take out of France. I don't think we do. Um, probably don't want to take out of Eastern Europe just in case of um, EU. But I think, hmm, may not want to take one out of Syria for the access. We'll probably just take them out of Vietnam though. Um, oh no, Vietnam, we probably want two in Vietnam. One, two, three. Maybe we're happy to go down to two in Lebanon. Yeah, probably. Uh, one, two, three, four is where we want to be at, I think. So we'll take the five from Asia scoring. We'll coup Egypt. That's a good start. So they have to coup us back in Egypt here. Hopefully they've got Nasser in hand to make that a worse play. Um, but either way, I think you know, it's going to be a little challenging for us to take Saudi Arabia and Iraq, but at least we can take Iraq. We can potentially try and move across to Tunisia to threaten that if we want to. Uh, and we can try and spread in South America a bit as well to prevent the Hail Mary realigns. But I think with West Germany hanging and everything else going on, we've got a bit of pressure on them at least. So they could Lebanon interesting call. Um, I'm happy to go one into Libya, one into Syria, I think. Um, which kind of guarantees us another easy battleground. Um, and then we can coup them out of Lebanon from there if they don't play into Jordan. So they can still take another battleground coup here, but um, there's now a very good chance that we get to score this for domination. And we do get the option to, if they don't spread, to just try and coup them out of Lebanon anyway. So another three up coup, probably on one of these battlegrounds now, I imagine. Oh, Venezuela, okay. That's cool. Um, I think we're okay with that, given that we're at turn two. Um, and that we can force some VPs here. So let's go Formosan, I think, over Korean War. Um, I think we go like this though. Argentina may have been better, but I think racing for Africa, now the DEFCON's down is better. And then I think we want to coup them out of Lebanon Oh, so we can't. Def comes down. Um, yeah, we'll probably... We'll, we'll just hold off on Middle East scoring to see if they've got NASA. I think there are more pressing concerns for us in terms of spreading on the board here. Like going to Argentina, trying to get around to Brazil, just you know pressuring them to use their ops there. Um, as well as taking Algeria. And possibly moving up through Southeast Asia if we get the opportunity as well. Might be good to place one into Pakistan, but I don't really want to hand them over the China card this turn. So we've got three more plays. So it'll probably be, you know, one, two, three. Hold the Korean War. We could also headline CNS next turn and play Korean War this turn because we've had some pretty good headlines. But if we redraw Suez Crisis, then we probably want to headline that. I think we should take the extra VP from Middle East scoring if we can. Okay, so I'm taking West Germany back. To be honest, I'm not too sad about that. Um, let's take this for now. And then go Middle East scoring 
And then we can use containment for a little bit of spread on our last AR. Assume they're not going to give us NASA here. So we've got like Zaya, Algeria, Argentina, but I think I probably want to go Pakistan one. I think that's the most efficient way to spread in Asia because it allows us to play the China card pretty profitably next turn. Okay. Oh, that's annoying. So I might actually go to Algeria one, Pakistan then in our last AR. Uh, or maybe we'll do it now because we don't really want to lose Algeria. We do give them plus one for an extra action round. Uh, means I get two ARs of containment. Mm. No, that's not really great. Is it worth giving up Algeria for though? Algeria's a, a fine coup target for us next turn, so I think it's okay for us to, if they want to put two ops in there now. So we know we've got Europe scoring coming next turn, so I need to think about that too. Uh, now that they've given us Romania, we do actually have the opportunity to take some non-battlegrounds, but I think given the amount of battlegrounds, even if we give them five VPs from Europe scoring here, um, given the amount of battlegrounds that we can take with our ops, it's just more efficient than going for the, the non-battlegrounds. So they were holding NASA, that's fine. So we're probably going to have a bit of a um, an Asia spread next turn, just to make sure that we get domination. Uh, I'm actually just keen to coup Algeria rather than taking it here. Um, I'm also probably keen to put two in South Korea. Yeah, we've given up a little bit of tempo in South America, but we're actually, if we press hard enough in Asia and we draw Asia scoring and Europe scoring next turn, um, then there's a chance that we can just win the game. So I think we might as well go for that. All right, interesting. So we'll take adjacency to Italy. Uh, we'll take the two there, and then I think we'll take one in. I'm not convinced that Austria is better than Czechoslovakia here. We'll just take the defensive one in Czechoslovakia just in case for later in the game. So a nice four up for them to finish the turn playing into Thailand. All right, so just the Europe scoring. Um, so we can socialist governments, but it's not great news to do that. There's no real way for us to degrade DEFCON in the headline phase. Um, other than Olympic Games, which is you know a fine headline, I guess, but it's also slightly risky in case they headline duck and cover, though I, I doubt they're gonna headline duck and cover here. Um, Indo-Pakistani war is a source of Miller, uh, a source of VPs rather. But I don't think we're going to be able to force a win here. So we're going to have to think about how we want to structure the turn. So I think socialist governments. Hmm. Socialist governments doesn't really get us Europe, but it lets us AL1 score Europe without VPs to them. So I think that's that's fine. Like if if they defect is it, they defect is it. But if it gets us five VPs, then that's pretty good. Even if we give up a coup here. Um, because they've set up some a situation in Thailand where we want to do something other than cooing anyway. Um, and well, that's that's a bit annoying. Um, makes our hands, you know, a handful of um, one ops. But let's do uh, this and then score Europe. That was actually with 10 VPs. That's pretty sweet. I didn't even realize we were going to take domination there because of Romania. <laughs> oh, that's sick. All right. So just inadvertently gained an extra five VPs that I didn't even notice. Um, and they had the defectors. Okay. So big coup there on Angola. 
Um, so we can go to space and we've got two wars to try and win the game. Three wars to try and win the game here. Um, so let's just take some things first. Do we want to take France? I don't think so. I think we want to take Thailand. Um, like that. Just in case, just in case all three of our wars fail and we have to go to another turn. I mean, we can't actually space now. It's worth noting, but I think taking Thailand is better than that being our only space, which wasn't going to get us VBs anyway. So they get to go back to a good position in Europe, but we're in a good position now in Asia. They can spread more effectively than us into Laos and other countries, but we get to move into um, South Korea and or India, potentially, um, depending on whether they prioritize South Korea here. But I dare say, given the VP situation, they're probably going to prioritize just taking battlegrounds in Asia at all costs here, just in case we have Asia scoring again. So this is probably going to be four into South Korea. Yeah. So we'll play Korean War. And fail. That's all right. Two more wars. Fingers crossed. The odds are in our favour. Though I don't want to jinx anything. Touch wood, touch wood. Come on, the IP war. What do we roll in that Korean war? A three. Well, it's lucky we didn't use our four plus war for that one. Would have wasted that roll. So we don't want to get, you know, too far ahead of ourselves here. If we aren't successful um, on either of these wars, then we could get into a little bit of trouble. Uh, on this board, so, but there we go, got there with the IP war, so a bit of a quick game, haven't had a, a steamroll for a while, uh, as the Soviets, doesn't happen all that often, um, but things decol and destyle on turn one, scoring cards came when we wanted them, and um, yeah, that's pretty much that, so let's have a quick recap of not a lot of action. Um, sock up defectors, rolled a six on that coup, rolled a six on that coup, and then had a good hand, turn one, um, in terms of spread, and got the blockade off. Uh, turn two, D style into some good spaces, um, rolled well again on a coup, and then had the scoring card when we wanted it. They had Asia scoring, which we D styled into um, domination for. Uh, which is, you know, one of the, one of the risks of um, headlining scoring cards is that your opponent can um, take domination when you don't expect it and you don't have a chance to respond before your scoring card resolves. Um, similarly, socialist governments, with us being the USSR, allowed us to take a cheeky domination in Europe, which I didn't even notice initially. Um, and then, yeah, turn that into a 10 VP swing, which was just huge and very fortunate. So thanks for watching, uh, Chifley. Thanks for stopping by to say nice. Um, Good to see you, and um, 
for our YouTube viewers. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Uh, go Bombers for the footy finals tomorrow for those Australians among us. And um, we'll see you next time.